Finally, the final topic of today's show. It is Microsoft Auto SR exclusive to Qualcomm uh, was, I guess, shown off. And this is kind of an interesting use of AI upscaling within Windows. And Mm -hmm. Alex, you wanted to talk about this one. And I'm curious. And of course, Oliver as well, because anything AI based, we got to get Oliver's opinion on it. So why why don't you take us through this one, Alex? So the idea of Auto SR is that within the current driver that you have from nvidia not intel to my knowledge nvidia and amd you have the ability to upscale your monitor's resolution essentially from a lower internal resolution using some kind of cheap not super high quality upscaler uh for example on the nvidia side of things it's a lantros filter you know they label it as such on the AMD side of things. You can turn on universal FSR one support. And we have obviously a lot of video coverage about the quality of FSR one. Um, and the idea is that's pretty annoying. Actually, if you want to, to do some sort of cheaper upscaling that has a level of quality to it, because you have to like down sample or you have to up sample your entire monitor resolution and turn that on before you start a game. It, doesn't really make a lot of sense actually it's not like um for example like the steam deck has a better way to do it uh if you want to use fsr in a universal manner uh here auto sr is a product that will be enabled to co-pilot qualcomm co-pilot plus what do they call these pcs now they have a weird name co-pilot plus co-pilot plus Plus. whatever that is the co-pilot plus uh pcs right that will essentially you enable it in the settings, apparently, and as a game is starting, it will then automatically scale the desktop and the game to the output resolution from a lower internal resolution. And here they did a uh, quarter resolution scale. In the preview they showed, it was output 1440p, internal resolution 720p. And instead of doing a simple, normal spatial scale operation, which there's, you know, ha- half a century or longer of mathematics behind how to do it in a way, they're using a convolution neural network running on an NPU in these Copilot Plus PCs from Qualcomm. Qualcomm. And I presume there's going to be support in the future for the other MPUs and perhaps also for graphics cards that support uh, things like DirectML. Uh, to do this, to do this higher quality upscale operation, much like you might see from a video upscaler using machine learning or, I don't know, maybe even offline uh, kind of stuff. The, the quality is something that we don't have a good sense of right now. They have some images on the blog about this, and Oliver can show them on screen here. And what do you think of these images, guys? Like, what do you think of them? The images, I think, look quite good. The problem with this, well, first of all, this is a game that has an art style that probably lends itself to being uh, upscaled in this way. It's a lot of clean lines, some cell shading, some relatively low frequency detail that probably does, you know, you can extrapolate and extend that and scale that right. through CNN pretty well. The other aspect of this that is conspicuous is they're not showing any video. <laughs> and my worry with this is because there's no real ground truth here, it's going to be hard to get a degree of temporal consistency that would be really satisfying. And I think we do see that problem a little bit more with like Topaz, say, if you're looking at Topaz. And Topaz obviously has the benefit of being able to potentially look at future frames as well, which this is. Or if you're watching the new 4K versions of uh, Alien. And- <laughs> Yeah. So it's, again, it's 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 not a perfect technology, right? But yeah. But just yeah, looking at the, I, I would really worry about temporal consistency in motion, um, because obviously the still frames can look can look quite good in this instance. But what is what is that actual temporal consistency in motion look like? I'm curious about that too, and I'm very happy you pointed out that Borderlands is like the easiest case for them to do this because it's not going for <laughs> realistic rendering. And it already has thick lines and like overly sharpened lines on purpose because it has black outlines on things that would, those would hide a lot of the, uh, perceptual problems that you can get from a machine learned upscale. And though there is a curious note in here. So you have to think about it. The GPU is rendering the game, right? That means the 
after it's rendered, it has to be sent to the MPU for upscaling. And they mention in the blog that it incurs around one frame of latency. I'm going to actually assume it is larger than one frame of latency. And that is a curious thing. I don't think that's the cost necessarily of them shift sending it there, but I think that's a processing cost. And I actually do think they may end up holding a frame. And that's going to be a little weird because there's the screenshot here of them comparing 720p to the 1440p SR upscale, auto SR upscale. It's a picture of some plants and they're both running at 44 FPS apparently. So there's no cost on the GPU side of things in terms of frame rate, but there is one in terms of latency. But if you look at the bottom right corner, there's this little patch of grass. I'm so sorry, Oliver, to make you do this. <laughs> um, there is way tons of aliasing and uh, under sampling on the grass of the 720p mm. image makes a lot of sense. But if you look at the bottom right grass in the auto SR image, it is completing subpixel lines in an interesting way. So I'm very curious about what this looks like at the end of the day. Uh, that is implying to me some sort of ability to reconstruct subpixel detail thin lines it's easy to like take a complete line that's low res and then upscale it and it'll have like a certain stylization to it but if there is no complete line and then completing right. it that's always implying some sort of super sampling almost uh so i'm always curious about this dlss1 could do that in extremely rare circumstances that i found out back in the day this is actually dlss1 had access to motion vectors this doesn't uh dls this is probably going to be in some ways very comparable to dlss1 or maybe even better or worse i don't know but i think this is an interesting future that microsoft is pointing at here the ability to take low power devices and get some better quality output of them automatically without having to rely on things like uh, DLSS and or XCSS or FSR2, either because the device doesn't support it or because it's too low power to make it useful. Uh, it also is good for maybe potentially older games or other use cases. I'm and I'm just curious to see what devices it comes to next here as well as to try it out. I think this is a good video to, for us to look at in the time when it comes out. But as John was just saying right before we start talking about this, uh, Microsoft has kind of poisoned the well yes, uh, with have. regards to AI due to them having really questionable motivations and uh i don't know also products that are ai based to a certain degree that they've been presenting for a while now uh and this seems like a, maybe a better use case for machine learning than other ones that they've presented in the immediate past so john what do you uh, think i mean i feel like we're in that we're in that point with ai where it's it's the popular buzzword and people are looking for problems to solve everywhere. And some of those problems are a perfect fit for what AI can do, these techniques can do. Other things, perhaps not. And I think that's what's kind of poisoned the well on a lot of this AI stuff is just companies trying to find everywhere they can to stick stick AI in. Obviously, Microsoft's recall situation may actually result in an actual recall. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, it's, re it's real <laughs> bad, actually. Uh, that situation where basically that, you know, that's, that's the thing is basically a key logger, not, not really AI so much. I would say maybe the search aspect of it is, but, uh, people figured out how to just pull all that data right out of there. Uh, but then there's, you know, the misuse of AI. There's, there's the Adobe stuff as well. Recently you saw where they said Awful. that basically you, they, they have, they can take any of the, the stuff that you've done within their software and use it, which they don't specify AI, but I'm pretty sure it's to like feed their, their training models and all that with whatever people yeah. generate. Like this kind of stuff sucks. Like that's not good, but this type of thing, like just sort of like using these technologies to sort of provide a tangible enhancement to something that a user might be doing without, you know, trampling on them in a weird way especially as like an optional thing like this kind of like image enhancement stuff it can be good and it can actually look quite convincing but it can also look bad and having the option to use something like this uh optionally as i you know <laughs> uh <laughs> i think it's interesting and it's certainly worth looking at and these examples that they show here for this auto sr stuff is cool and 
you know, just by calling it auto SR, I guess also kind of, uh, it brings to mind things like auto HDR, which I think has been a huge success for Microsoft. So if they can find ways to implement sort of these system level features that can enhance the image in some meaningful way, but is also optional, I think that's cool. I'm, I'm into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was a good, that's a good uh, spot with the grass there that is resolving in a way that's like way more isn't it, uh, characteristic. Isn't it interesting? Much more advanced techniques. It is interesting. Yeah. And I think that like, to me, yeah, my assumption was that if they're not showing video, they, <laughs> they don't really have that ability. But if, if this is really producing a good result, even without the benefit of things like motion vectors, that is really compelling. And potentially it's very interesting because they, they talk about enabling it for 11 games at launch. But they make a point of saying this could be enabled for anything really that can that can run the computer. So yeah. that's uh, that's potentially very interesting. What so if I have a question. Whatever panned out with the um, didn't Nvidia at least introduce something for YouTube videos or video playback? Yeah. It's still that was in not there. So good, I don't think. I, I, that was not great initially, was it? They they updated the model a while back, but I haven't really been paying too much attention to it. It was a little bit over sharpened. Right. The OG. I'll, be curious, I'll be curious to look uh, at that again. They changed the the model to be less so. Uh, but right. so the so the question is here. This is running on the Qualcomm right. SoC. Mm -hmm. This has a certain low level of machine learning performance, according to Google. There is forty five tops here i'm pretty sure those are int 8 tops does that sound familiar mm -hmm. to anyone do you think this could run on xbox series x <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm serious like if you could take an old i'm pretty sure like eight int tops xbox series x is like 56 or something like that maybe it's even like 48 it's like a lower number you could google that it's another number um, I'm just curious if wh whether or not Microsoft could do the exact same thing on an Xbox Series X GPU, just incur a level of latency uh, by holding a frame and letting it do its work, and then you'd get uh, machine learning upscaled Xbox 360 games that, or earlier, that never ever got updates, for example to uh, be Series yeah. X back I think it's 48 plus. tops and 8 tops. Yeah, so that that is putting it tech, on a technical level, which these things are not always directly comparable, at least on a level of this uh, NPU in the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite and Plus processor. So do you think Microsoft would uh, dark horse this onto Xbox Series X? That'd be fascinating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I just kind of thought about think, it now. I mean, a big big part of this has got to be the fact that they're able to run it on an NPU that's totally separate from the GPU architecture, right? So yeah, that's this a big true. part of making this performant. The fact that it is running in a performant way on low power silicon is very encouraging, though. It suggests that this could really work quite well across a range of low power laptop devices and things like that. So yeah, yeah, let's do it.